We are going to start at Trafalgar Square and make our way to Westminster Abbey. But first, we will do what all the other kids do and take some selfies with the lions. Spectacular, magnificent, extraordinary. Can't even explain what you will see when you come to London. Nothing compares with seeing it with your own two eyes. The architecture, the tradition, the history is, what can I say, extraordinary. Traveling is not easy. Where do I go? What do I see? How do I get there? And when I get there, what am I looking at? Here is the entrance to the Horse Guards Parade Grounds. Inside, you can see the London Eye in the background. They celebrated the Queen's 80th birthday here. This is the Jubilee Walkway on the way to Buckingham Palace with all the flowers in bloom, just two weeks out from the coronation of King Charles. From here, it is an 11 minute walk to Buckingham Palace and there are directions to Household Calvary Museum, Parliament Square, Churchill War Room. Right next door to the Horse Guards Parade is the entrance to 10 Downing Street. It's that gray building on the right. They let cars in and out so quickly. You can still call home from the Red London phone booth to let everyone back home know how you're doing. There are historical sites, one after another, on the way to Westminster Abbey. Next, we walk by King Charles Street and the Cabinet War Rooms in the city of Westminster. There is Westminster Abbey, Parliament Square, and Big Ben. You can just stand on a street corner and see the spectacular centuries-old cathedrals and abbeys all over the city of London. The construction of Westminster Abbey began in the year 901. It is where the monarchy is crowned and the remains of the royal families are buried. It is essentially a cemetery. Buried inside the abbey are 3,300 royal and famous people. They are buried on the floors, in the walls, under the ground, and above ground. The church is in the shape of a cross. The people buried here range from poets to scientists, politicians to monarchs. Here is the tomb of David Livingston, missionary in Africa, buried here in 1873. Some of the famous tombs at the church include Sir Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Edward V, it's the final resting place of 30 kings and queens, the first of which was buried here in 1066. Here is the large tomb of King Richard II, buried in 1400. There are quite a lot of sculptures with skulls decorating the tombs. You can pay five pounds to get into the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Galleries, 50 feet above the floor of the Abbey. This was called the Triforium and was built by Henry III in the 13th century. There are 300 objects on display spanning 1,000 years of history. Quite a few items have been removed from the display to be used in the coronation of King Charles in just two weeks from now. Here is the very coronation chair that will be used for King Charles and the stone for sitting on will be placed inside. As you can see, there's nothing to sit on. That stone is kept in Scotland and it will be brought down specially for this occasion. The Coronation House has spectacular stained glass windows and displayed around the outside walls are explanations 
of a coronation, the coronation chair, the coronation service, the coronation crown, and what is a queen consort. And here is a photo of their majesties, King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla. The 13th century medieval floor tiles in this room are the finest surviving in England and include the coat of arms of King Henry III with the three lions of England. Here is the oldest door in England and a chapel in honor of a vicar. So King William, the conqueror of England, rode his horse down the Isle of Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day in 1066. On that day, he declared himself King of England, and since then, every king and queen have been crowned here, except for two. Thank you for joining me on this tour of the Abbey.